Hello everyone, it's CJ Peaceful. Uh, I just wanted to give you an update on a few things I've been working on. I apologize, it's been a couple of weeks, I know. Um, I think in the last video, uh, you saw this uh, HHO separation device I had constructed. I've had a few questions about it and I had a few uh, individuals send me email asking if I could give them some measured output. Um, unfortunately, I never did do that. Uh, the reason being is I had to use the threaded rods actually for another project. Um, uh, but I was able to get uh, somewhere around four and a half, four point seven five amps out of this before I'm, I sort of maxed out, and that was using an awful lot of electrolyte, a lot of lye. Um, not very efficient cell either. Um, I never actually took a measurement as far as how much hydrogen I was, I was putting out, um, but it was uh, it was enough to fill a couple balloons actually. Um, it never really overheated, so that was that was a, I think that's a good characteristic of this design. Uh, the gases, as I showed in another video, never, never uh, uh, seem to to uh, cross between the chambers. Uh, there's no contamination there ever, even at the higher amps. Um, but anyway, I thought it sort of took this idea and I thought I'd move on to something a little, a little different. Um, I thought, well, maybe if I can. Uh, increase, or excuse me, decrease the gap between the electrodes. I could possibly uh, draw more current, and maybe incorporate some um, some washers onto the threaded rods to increase the surface area. Thereby, those two combinations maybe increase in the production. Um, that worked out okay. I think I I ran into about six six and a half amps was about the maximum I can get out of this configuration. Um, I took that and applied it to a CPVC setup, as you can see here. Um, that worked out okay. Uh, the rod I used in that application was a bit longer than the ones I used in that one. Uh, I believe this one measures about 10, maybe 12 inches total in length. Um, uh, the output was, was a little bit more than, say, this one or this one, uh, simply because I had you know, more surface area on a larger rod, and I used uh, a few um, washers and some uh, nuts uh, that I had threaded onto this rod to give it a little bit more surface area. Um, notice that worked out pretty well, so then I moved on to something a little bit bigger. And this is two and a half inch, or excuse me, two inch diameter PVC piping. Um, uh, this actually produced quite well up to about 13, 14 amps. Um, after that, the material, the solution got too warm. And as you can see, um, kind of got a little bit of distortion there in the tubing. Things started kind of warping and melting a bit. Uh, actually, when I first constructed this generator, there's only about an eighth of an inch gap between the two top couplers here. Um, and as you can see, the heat sort of wreaked havoc on the, on the, on the design. Uh, but I did not, I'm going to repeat, repeat this, I did not have the heat issue until I was above about 12 amps. Um, then I noticed the temperature of this generator um, just shot up like a rocket. Um, I think I was, before I hit 12, I was staying around 115, 120 um, degrees on the surface temperature here of the tubing. Uh, that, was, that was fairly consistent for about a week. Um, after that, once I, once I increased the amperage by increasing my, my electrolyte um, to about 15 amps or so, uh, the temperature exponentially increased uh, to about 100, and, I think it's about 160, 170 degrees, and that's when I noticed the warping and the fittings here uh, was no longer creating an airtight seal, and as you can see maybe in the video here, a little bit fuzzy, the indentations of the washers actually started melting into the cap. Uh, these are the electrodes flat plates, more surface area, no neutral plates, these are all tied together with stainless steel washers. Um, again, it produced quite well. I was able to get 250 milliliters of hydrogen only gas um, in about two minutes, actually about two minutes and two seconds. Um, anything above that, and then, uh, again, this started, uh, the heat was, was creating a problem with the, with the tube. So that's where I'm at. Um, I think I'm going to 
start working with acrylic since that seems to uh, be a much better product uh, other than PVC as far as temperatures go. Um, and we'll see what happens and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, I'm working on a dry cell. That's another video for another time.